Hey, with a name like Drenda and a last name Cassie, I'm just used to whatever I get, and I'm people cool with it. As long as people call me, and as long as I'm getting to do what God's called me to do, I'm happy. You're good. Mm -hmm. But awesome. you are very accomplished. You, of course, you've been a wife, pastor, speaker, author of 13 books, businesswoman, and you have your own show called Drenda, and on YouTube, it's Drenda on Guard. And your book is Fight Like Heaven, Living on Guard, a culture, I didn't bring my gl glasses out, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. A cultural guide to living on guard. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Well, we need to be on guard. The Bible tells us in many times, in Mark 13, it's four times it says, be on guard. And it's talking about the last days and the return of the Lord. And it tells us over and over, be on guard, be on guard. And so as I started, started studying the seven mountains of cultural influence, I realized, wow, these mountains of influence, family and government and education and medicine and entertainment, uh, all these different areas, uh, media, they're converging against the Lord and even religion, even religion, you know, religion is, uh, it, it's a form of godliness without any power, gives the sacrifice, but does, doesn't give the reward and the benefits of serving the Lord and all of the great fruit from serving God, but it makes you feel like you have to have to sacrifice for God. And so all these areas, as I began to study them, I saw they're all converging against the Lord and that we needed to be living on guard. We needed to recognize the time we're in. And just like Mark 13 says, be on guard. It says, be alert, be on guard. Uh, and so we have another scripture says, be on, be alert because the enemy roams around seeking whom he may devour. And I see families being devoured, children being devoured. I see things and we all see things we were discussing sure. that are happening in our culture, in our, even our country, the United States of America that are shocking to us that we've never seen things that we would have never dreamed could happen. We see happening. We see rights being taking away, religious freedom uh, being taken away, people being censored. We have social media platforms that kids are being, uh, they're being marketed on, they're being trafficked on, they're being groomed on, and they don't censor that, but they censor just certain words we might say or opinions we might have uh, where doctors can no longer uh, take care of their patients the way they want to. They can't say what they believe. Uh, we, we have this incredible censorship happening through this technology. And as you read in the book, you find out that's a plan and that the technology they were even talking about transhumanism uh, mm -hmm. taking and we hear transgender. We hear trans a lot and it is a plan that's been going on for a long time time. It's well laid out. I laid out in the book. It's not something that's maybe going to happen. It's something that they are pushing to happen by the end of 2030 uh, to be completely into everything uh, that I talk about in the book. But even by the as quick as 2023 to move us into a great reset, uh, fourth industrial revolution, where uh, technology is actually running even physical bodies. And it's, it's not something that's sci-fi. This is for real. It's something that their prophet Harari is holding out and saying, this is what we're going to be doing. It's what will happen. It said it, he made the statement, it won't change the way you live life. It will change you. Mm. And so when you start talking about mind control, controlling people's bodies, implanting them with technology and controlling their decisions, this is I know it sounds Orwellian, but this is what is truly happening. And so I cover the seven mountains. I cover how they're converging against the Lord. And this is the Tower of Babel all over. Uh, this is the day where God had to destroy the earth because uh, of the evil that, was in the, that had been done. And so God actually brought a flood. The next time around, it won't be that. It will be, I believe, the second coming of the Lord. I believe the globalists have a plan, and they are shaking their fist in defiance, just like they did at the Tower of Babel. Let us build. They're trying to build their own kingdom. Uh, they have a global elitist uh, system, agenda, and people that will rule and control, and they call it uh, capitalism, but it's a new form. It's called corporate capitalism. It's a global capitalism that is controlled by a very small group of people. It's designed to eradicate small business. It's designed even to destroy farms and communities. We see farmland being bought up all over the United States of America, being controlled by this group of elitists, and they're putting solar panels on them 
but the solar panels are being put in areas where farm and farming and food production has been the highest. Why do you do that? Why do you get a farmer to sign a contract for 30 or 40 years to tie up the land to where it can no longer be farmed? Because you must drive food shortages, you must drive energy prices and energy shortages to control people. And these are things people go, well, that's not spiritual. Oh yes, it's very spiritual. It's very spiritual because the, the end game is to actually take people's autonomy away from them, their ability to follow God, serve God, know God as creator. And these are plots that Satan is behind. He's the tyrant, right? He's the tyrant. These globalists, they think they're so smart that they know all these things, but really they're being used. They've just bought into a plan, just like throughout history, empires. Uh, I put Nebuchadnezzar's dream in here with a statue and the different empires that Daniel uh, was able to interpret Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And I believe that God gave that dream to encourage Daniel to let him know Babylonian captivity that you're in right now will not last forever. And I also believe God gave it to us to know where we are in time, to see all those empires have come and gone. And God says in the end, that he will actually bring a stone that is God and it will crush every empire, including the Antichrist kingdom that they're trying to set up, a new world order. It will crush those, the stone will crush all other kingdoms to powder. And it says, and then the mountain of the Lord will rise glorious. So Daniel living in this captivity as a Hebrew he was in that captivity, but he saw the plan of God for all generations. And we are living in that day, in that hour, in that final kingdom that would come, that Antichrist kingdom. And it's, it's unfolding right before us. It's not hearsay. It's not, you know, people say, well, we've heard these things for years. And the Bible says people will say that. But I know for all of us, we probably, I came to the Lord uh, reading the great, late great planet Earth back in the uh, you know early seven, uh, late seventies, and coming to Jesus and saying, "I don't want to miss you, Lord. God is gracious. He gives warnings. He gives times. But I believe our generation will see these things come to pass. Um, you know, it's happening before us. We can't explain what we see, but when I wrote the book, I realized, oh, these are all converging. There's a plan. This isn't happenstance. This is a plan. And the biggest mountain to me, the enemy has attacked his family. Oh yeah. You see it, mm -hmm. right? You see it. You pastor a church. You see it. Oh, absolutely. You know, cause your family is your foundation, yes. you know, and, uh, yes. when the, you can't build on a faulty foundation. So if the family is not there building the foundation then everything else gets a little crack in it and, and, seems like everything else seeps into their little little minds, you know. And so, yeah, we sit in the, we're seeing it in the church. And um, one of the things what pastors are trying to do is trying to bring this generation to a point where they really sincerely uh, understand their faith, understand uh, why they do what they do, why they serve the Lord, not just because uh, I was raised in the church or, you know, I mean, we're really trying to make sure they have their foundation Right. Uh, in Christ, because there's so many other things right. out here that comes in. We didn't have all this when we was in school, you know, and it really comes after them. And it's starting in elementary. We're not talking about middle school and high schoolers. We're mm -hmm. talking about elementary kids are coming home and asking their parents, you know, different types of questions about, um, you know, why we do this and how come this and mm -hmm. are boys different than girls or are they the same? And, and so this is, that's what's making some of them pull their kids out and do the homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's because they're like, it's just way too much. Well, we it's can't let children be indoctrinated. Exactly. That's right. It's just he way too said much. The student will become like their teacher when they're fully trained. And we see the enemy. He's always after the godly seed. Yeah. Just like in the Old Testament, we read about how the fallen angels mated with the women in the earth and created a race of giants called the Nephilim. And they were corrupted. Their DNA was corrupted by satanic mm -hmm. a bloodline. And God had to destroy the earth with a flood. We see them trying to corrupt kids in their bloodline. We treat transgender 
and transhumanism are both about changing the design and the plan of God. God created the male and female. We don't hate anyone. This is not a message of hate. This is a message of hope because if you're caught in those lies, it's destructive. Uh, suicide rates after transitioning are super high. In the book, I talk about a curriculum that's being pushed in elementary school to kids, first grade, second grade, third grade, kindergarten even. It's called the gender-bred curriculum. And it's where they take something where we grew up with the gingerbread man, right? Exactly. I'm not saying that was a great parable either, but anyway. But the gender-bred curriculum shows them that what their organs are is not what their attraction is, what is in their mindset. And so they go through, walking them through a whole new gender and letting them choose. I mean, my goodness, when I was in elementary school, I was just nervous about how to get through the hall. I was I confused about <laughs> finding my way to class. Yeah. Can you imagine? Kids are already confused and just scared in this new environment, and they're trying to find the restroom and find their classroom. Can you imagine introducing to these little innocent children that they may not be a boy or a girl? I mean, that should make, I, I know it, it angers the father that they would come against these little children. And the Bible says, if you harm one of these little ones, you'd be better to have a millstone tied around your neck. So if the church doesn't talk about these things, if we don't wake up and we don't equip parents and let them know what's being done in the schools, but also what answers, I give answers in the book. I don't just put the problems there, but in every mountain, I show what the enemy's trying to do to bring us to this new world order, this great reset that they have planned and laid out. And it's not a hearsay, what they're trying to accomplish. I let them know what you've got to do with your children, what you've got to do uh, in governance, what you've got to do with medicine and all these other areas, education, media. I'm so thankful for what you're doing here because we cannot get our media any longer from mainstream media. We have to wake up and realize there are agendas that are being pushed through these mechanisms oh, yeah. and they're driving the same narrative. No matter which station you turn on, there's a narrative there. And that narrative is to push this one world agenda. And they're part of it. They're part of the World Economic Forum, the uh, Global Leaders for Tomorrow. 30 years ago, the Global Leaders for Tomorrow were recruited to the World Economic Forum. They've been working this plan and indoctrinating this plan. And now they all sit at the tops of governments across the world. They sit in boardrooms in media organizations. They sit in hospital corporations. And the move is to move us away from small business, away from community, away from states' rights, and to a system that is uh, dictated from a one world order. And if you look in Manhattan, you'll see uh, right there in Manhattan, the United Nations, and that is a sovereign nation in and of itself from the United States that sits right in. I cover all these things in the book and the history, how Satan has tried to infiltrate families, infiltrate human beings, male, male female, from the garden forward. He's done this throughout history and how we combat it as the body of Christ. But we can't let, we can't let uh, educational system tell our kids who a gender bred curriculum Absolutely. or there's another one the unicorn curriculum yes. and then we look at the toys in the store and we sell these unicorns and we think our, all the little girls want a unicorn what we don't realize is when those kids go to school that a teacher is going to turn out a unicorn curriculum and now it looks very inviting to these kids uh, and it's like oh mom and dad approve of this because they bought me a unicorn and these children are then confused yeah. about who's an authority if they're a male or a female, uh, children, young children are now being put on hormones that uh, the one hormone, the one drug is used with sexual predators and offenders throughout history to take away their sexual desire. And so they're giving them these, if they're chemically castrating children, wow. feeding them these lies and then a million dollars is made on every child who goes through the full surgery. This is a money-making agenda, oh and parents aren't even aware what's happening. So that's just one of the agendas. That's just one of them. The Bible says, why did God make the two one, a male and a female? Because he sought a godly seed. Why does Satan attack? He's after your seed. He's after your children. He wants to take away their God identity, their DNA. He wants to mutilate their bodies. Uh, transform them into his image instead of God's image. Let, let me ask you a question. You mentioned transhuman. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, can a 
expound on that a yes. little bit? It's the belief that technology can pr improve on our DNA. Mm -hmm. And so instead of us being, it's again, right back to the Nephilim, right? That's how Satan was trying to enter into our DNA. And so it's using technology to alter and do implants into the body, to alter the mind, to actually be able to control certain aspects of your brain. Mm -hmm. uh, certain, now it's being peddled and it'll be sold as something positive, just like we've seen a lot of sure. medical things that have been peddled as positive, but have new definitions medically than anything we've ever seen, contents that we've never seen before. And so transhumanism utilizes technology. It utilizes even the ability to change certain things, but they're, gonna, they're going to peddle it as, oh, you'll be able to hear better, or this will fix your eyesight. I get That's it. how yeah. it'll start, or has yeah. actually how it already has started. Yeah, like the gingerbread, right? Right, right. Yeah. But it <laughs> will, exactly, it'll continue into control, mm -hmm. where it is mind control. Okay. It is controlling the working class force, if you will, where you have a certain group of elite people and they control the rest and they are really basically human slaves. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. To see more like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Get all the latest content from TCT Ministries. We'd love to pray alongside you for God's blessings in your life. So you can email your prayer request to prayer at tct.tv or click the link below and submit your request at tct.tv. God bless you and thank you for watching.